dear students welcome to build from basics youtube channel we teach engineering and science basics to students today's topic is if a motor is rated in watts or kilowatts or megawatt then the question is why can't transformers and ac generators be rated in watts or kilowatts or megawatts and why they should be rated in volt ampere or kilo volt ampere or mega volt ampere first i will explain the theory behind why transformers and ac generators are rated in volt amperes and later prove the concept with supporting simulations so in case of uh, motors normally the customer is more interested on the amount of load it can drive to decide what kind of motor is suitable to meet their to meet that uh, particular purpose therefore electric motor rating is always given in terms of its shaft power okay the shaft power is the it is the measure of capacity of the motor to drive a particular load therefore the motors are rated in watts or kilowatts or horsepower you all know that horsepower or hp is equivalent to 746 watts now so you should remember here that the current that motor draws from the power supply depends on its power factor therefore uh current actually depends on how much active power and reactive power that the motor consumes so that means the bill the electricity bill depends on uh, the power factor as well but the rating is given in kilowatt or watt or megawatt therefore the electric power supplied to the motor terminals is known as upper end power the magnitude of this uh, upper end power can be calculated from the motor name plate by multiplication of voltage and current now coming to the main topic why transformers are rated in mva now let's talk about why transformer rating is in either volt ampere or kilo volt ampere or mega volt ampere so i request you to concentrate and try to follow each sentence carefully the main reason is the capacity of the transformer is limited by two factors you know the first one is the current that the transformer winding can carry and the second one is the voltage that the transformer is designed to work without saturation in general the voltage in the power system is kept constant within the specified range therefore the transformer voltage is also transformer voltage and also the ratio normally it is fixed then what is variable therefore basically the rating of the transformer is directly proportional to the current that it delivers to the load and load current is always depends on what it depends on the amount of load and type of load okay now in general loads in power system are two types resistive load and reactive loads and again reactive loads are again two types inductive and capacitive loads that you already know it is known that active power is related to resistive loads while reactive power is related to reactive loads so the question is the resistive load consumes active power but the reactive loads they don't consume any active power so they don't they only either consume reactive power or produce reactive power depending on if it is react inductive load it consumes reactive power if it is capacitive load it produces reactive power so the reactive loads as i said they do not consume any active power as i said still the reactive loads they they consume or produce reactive reactive power that's why there will be a steady current flow between the source and the load 
therefore irrespective of the type of load whether it is resistive or reactive the load involves a current flow between the source and load therefore ac generators and the transformers must supply this current irrespective of the type of load it can be it can be resistive or reactive or it, in the reactive also it can be capacitive or inductive it doesn't matter so there will be always current flow between source and load and this current has to be supplied by the transformers and ac generators that's why the transformers and ac generators are alternators rated in volt amperes or kilowatt amperes or megavolt amperes instead of kilowatt okay so to understand uh, I, I, the the question is answered now but if you understand this concept further because this is only theory i have explained uh, you can find it in textbooks also but I, I i want to explain uh, quickly the fundamentals of power flow in resistor inductor and capacitor and support these statements whatever i have mentioned here with the help of a simulations so i want to explain you i want to go through some simulations about uh, the power flow in resistor inductor and capacitor and also how this will impact the current that it draws from the source and then finally why transformer is rated in kva so i will explain the concept with the help of simulations so before doing that remember this power triangle active and reactive power you know together they make the upper end power the active power is the multiplication of rms voltage v and rms current and the cosine of angle between them the units of active power is watts or kilowatt or megawatt the reactive power is it is the multiplication of rms voltage current and the sine of angle between voltage and current the unit of reactive power is kilovolt ampere reactive kvr or volt ampere reactive or megawatt depends on uh, the amount of uh, reactive power and finally the apparent power s is the, the, the units of apparent power is either volt ampere or kilovolt ampere or megawatt ampere this is just uh, reminding some basics to you before we go to the pure pure resistor now let's talk about the relation between voltage current and power in a pure resistive circuit so the circuit shows ac sub ac source uh, ac source is supplying a resistive load the transformer represent transmission system the figure shows here the instantaneous voltage current and power waveforms across resistor the blue waveforms here see the blue waveform in the right side is the voltage and red one is current as you can see the current in the resistor it is in phase with the voltage the angle between voltage and current is zero so the green waveform is the instantaneous power across the resistor it is the product of voltage and current the instantaneous power is measured in volt amperes the power is always positive both in positive and negative half cycle of the voltage okay now if you want to see the average of this active power so this purple line straight line is the average of active power so it is the um it is shown in purple dash line you see it's exactly positive and it's the middle of this um, Uh, green car the pure resistor only consumes active power the active power is uh, multiplication of voltage rms voltage current and cosine of angle between them and uh, pure resistor doesn't consume any reactive power because the pi is zero vi sin pi is zero that's why it doesn't consume any reactive power q is zero and finally upper end power is equivalent to active power only okay so now let's investigate 
current voltage and power in a pure inductive circuit. The circuit shows AC source is supplying an inductive load. The instantaneous voltage, current and power waveforms across the pure inductives. Pure inductor is shown, the figure beside. Here, the blue curve and red curve are the voltage and current in the circuit. As you can see, the, voltage, the current here lacks the voltage because this is the voltage waveform, this is the current. Current lacks the voltage by 90 degrees because it's a pure inductor. It lacks the voltage by 90 degrees. So the reason I will explain uh, here, okay, why it lacks by 90 degrees or why basically current lacks uh, by voltage in a pure inductor. So basically you know that when a time varying voltage applied across a pure inductor, an opposing voltage called back EMF is produced by the inductor due to its self-inductance. It's also called Lenz law. This back EMF opposes and limits the current flowing in the inductor. So it opposes the current flowing in the inductor. Therefore, current through the inductor cannot follow the voltage across it. And it always lags behind it. Therefore, if the inductor is pure, the current lags behind the voltage by 90 degrees. So because of this back EMF and self-inductance, the current cannot follow the voltage and it lags, be lags behind the voltage by 90 degrees. Now, let's look at the instantaneous power in the inductor. The green waveform is instantaneous power here. It is a product of voltage and current. The instantaneous power is measured in V volt ampere. You, you, as you can see, the instantaneous power pulsate between the identical negative and positive half cycles, negative cycle and positive half cycles, with a double the frequency of supply voltage. So this is supply voltage frequency. It has only one wave, one complete cycle, but the uh, power waveform has two cycles. That's why the frequency is double the frequency. But if you see the average of this green curve, that is the power is zero because it has equal negative half cycles and equal magnitude of positive half cycles. Basically, then the average power is nothing but the active power across a pure inductor is zero. So, The average instantaneous power is called active power and it's zero and it is shown as a dashed line in this figure. Now, the active power in an inductor, you know, it's a multiplication of Vi cos pi. V here is RMS voltage and I is uh, RMS current and cos pi. So pi is the angle between instantaneous voltage and current, it is 90 degrees, that's why by equation also, active power is zero, and the reactive power is Vi sine pi. Sine pi is one, and therefore Vi sine pi is equivalent to V multiplied by I. That means the upper end power constitutes only reactive power in a pure uh, inductive circuit. There is no active power. That's why S is equivalent to Q. Now, let's, let's talk about relation between voltage, current and power in a pure capacitive circuit. Here the circuit shows AC source is supplying a capacitive load. The instantaneous voltage, current and power waveforms are given in this um, uh, figure, right? The blue and red, blue waveform is voltage waveform and red is current waveform. As you can see, the current waveform is uh, leading the voltage waveform. That means if the voltage is zero, the current is already at maximum. When the voltage is, so that means the current waveform is leading the voltage waveform by 90 degrees. That means in a, in a pure inductor, current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. The reason is, you know, the capacity is nothing but what? It's, a, it's, it's two conductors separated by a dielectric medium. So when a capacitor is connected across a voltage source, 
immediately the voltage doesn't build up instantaneously. So the capacitor starts charging slowly by taking the current from the source. Therefore, in a purely capacitive circuit, the voltage in, uh, cannot increase in phase with the current as capacitor needs some time to charge. This makes the voltage to follow the current and the voltage reaches its peak value sometime after the current reaches. The result is that in a pure capacitive circuit, the current always leads the voltage by 90 degrees. If the um, capacitor is not pure, then the angle is little lesser. But in a pure circuit, it is 90. Pure capacitive circuit, the angle is always 90 degrees. Now, let's look at the instantaneous power. Similar to the inductor, in the capacitor also, the instantaneous power pulsates between positive, equal, uh, positive and negative half cycles. And the frequency of this power is, is uh, double the frequency of voltage. So as the voltage has uh, one cycle here, it is a blue curve, and the power has two cycles. So, but if you see the average value of this power, it is nothing but zero. The purple line is average value because it has pure, uh, both positive, equal uh, positive and negative off cycles. The average value of power in a pure capacitor circuit is zero. Basically, there is no difference between inductor or capacitor in terms of instantaneous power. Only the difference is the sign. So, in, in, in the uh, during the first half uh, during the first 90 degrees. In an inductor, the power is negative, but in a capacitor, it is opposite, positive. So it starts from in an inductor, it starts from negative to positive. In a capacitor, it starts from, it starts from positive to negative. That's all. That is only the difference. So if you look at the now the, the equations for uh, active and reactive power, basically the angle between voltage and current is minus 90 degrees. That's why even though if it is minus 90, cos minus 90 is zero anyway. So active power is P is equal to Vi cos pi, that is 0 watts. And reactive power is minus Vi because sine pi, sine minus 90 is minus 1. And finally, the upper end power is equivalent to reactive power. So it is similar to inductive circuit. So, now, this is the combined waveforms of voltage, current and power of a resistor, inductor and capacitive. This is presented here for a comparison. In reality, a pure resistor, capacitor or inductor never exists. The resistor is associated with some inductance and capacitance and inductor always has some internal resistance, even uh, um, also some parasitic capacitance across the inductor. Even capacitor also has some inductor, uh, some resistance across it. So, but on top of that, in power system, loads are always a mix of resistive, inductive, and capacitive loads. So you can't find any pure resistive, resistor, or inductor, or capacitor in real life. Now, let's do some simulations. So, so far we have discussed theory behind the circuit elements. Now let's do the simulations. What I do, I'll show you a simple simulation to understand these three uh, circuit elements, resistor, inductor, and uh, capacitor. And show you, show you that there is always RMS current flow between the, uh, from the source and the load, irrespective of type of load. That means whether it can be resistor or inductor or capacitor there is always equal amount of uh, RMS current flowing, flowing between the source and the load. So therefore, the transformers and generators always have to supply this, this uh, load irrespective of type of load. So now let's consider a single phase circuit here with the three network elements, a resistor, inductor, and capacitor as shown here. The circuit elements are shown in the table. So what we'll do, let's take a single phase supply, 11 kV supply, 11 kV is a, 11 kV is a phase um, line voltage. 
and uh, uh, the phase voltage is then uh, 6.35 kV. Let's take the, uh, let's take a transformer of uh, 23 kVA and with a ratio 6.35 kilovolts uh, in the primary and 230 volts in the secondary. So then the rated current in the primary is 3.62 kilo uh, ampere, the 3.62 amperes and the secondary is 100 amperes. Uh, to supply, uh, now let's calculate the resistor, inductor and capacitor using these formulas. So Z is equal to Z is impedance here, Z is equal to V square by S. Here V is the voltage, that is 230 and S is the power, 23 kVA. So R is equivalent to Z and L is Z by 2 pi F and C equivalent to 1 by 2 pi Fz. If we use these formulas, we will get these values. R is equal to 2.3 ohms and um, um, L inductor is 7.32 millihenry. So that means both uh, resistor, inductor and capacitor, they, they consume equal amount of power, but resistor consume uh, active power and uh, inductor consume reactive power, 23 kilo, ampere, um, kilo volt ampere reactive reactive power and capacitor produce 23 kilo kvr reactive power so the number is same but the units are different so uh, now let's see the simulation results so ps car software is used for other simulations you can see any other software you can uh, you can you can use any other software for your interest like matlab or others but i have used ps card here so now let's see the simulation results here, first let us look at the pure resistive circuit. An ideal AC voltage source and ideal transformer are chosen to focus only on the impact of type of load. So, and type of load and the loading on the transformer. Let's run the simulations. So, here on the right side, the blue and red curves in the first graph are the instantaneous voltage and current, respectively. As you can notice, both are in phase. The green curve and, and the green curve below is the instantaneous power. The power is always positive and the average value is around 23 kilowatt. So the graph below shows the uh, RMS voltage and RMS current. As you can notice, the RMS voltage is 230 volts and RMS current is 100 amperes. Now, remember this value 100 amperes. So now let's let's go to the uh, replace with the inductor and run the simulations. So now it is an inductor, run the simulations. So the right side, the blue and red curves in the graph are instantaneous voltage and current. As you can notice, the the current the current here lacks the voltage by 90 degrees. The green curve in the graph below is instantaneous power. The power equally oscillates between negative and positive half cycles. That's why the average power is zero. The RMS voltage and current shown in the graph below. The RMS current is 100 amperes, which is equivalent to the resistor case. So even resistor is also drawing 100 amperes RMS current. Now let's replace this inductor with a capacitor and see. So now let's run the uh, simulations again. The right side graph shows uh, shows some results. The blue curve is voltage and red curve is current. As you see, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. And the green curve below is power, instantaneous power. It oscillates between positive and negative half cycles. So you can also see that it is the frequency is uh, double the frequency. And the average value of power is zero. And the current, RMS current is 100 amperes which is equivalent to the inductive and resistor case, okay? Now, the simulation results uh, combined or consolidated results are given in this uh, slide. So, the uh, as you see, the simulation results of instantaneous RMS, uh, instantaneous and RMS values of voltage and current and the instantaneous of instantaneous power of a pure resistor, inductor, and capacitor are presented here for comparison. From these results, it is clear that all the components draw 100 amperes RMS current. 
irrespective of type of load so all these element all these elements that is resistor inductor or capacitor they equally load the transformer and the ac generator who is supplying the energy to them only the resistors perform the real work and consumes energy and reactor capacitors they don't do any work and they don't consume any active power but reactive power is the reason for the current flow there is because there is still there is current flow right so you can see the 100 amperes current flow why because still the uh, inductor consumes reactive power and capacitor produce reactive power that's why there is always a 100 amperes current is involved therefore it is a must for the transformer and ac generators to supply this current to the loads so if you are supplying some current to the load even though the inductor and uh, capacitors are not consuming or not, uh, any energy and not doing any real work still the transformer and generator has to supply that's why it is very important to rate the transformer and uh, ac generator in kva or mva or va because the transformer the current through the transformer winding depends on the load current right so it doesn't it doesn't know whether it's a resistor or inductor or capacitor basically what is drawing that current basically it doesn't know so that's why it is very important to provide the rating in kva or mva now that's all for today's and uh, as you see the uh, here i have uh, shown you the uh, active power basically average active power in the resistor it is 23 and the uh, uh, inductor and capacity is zero but anyway so that's all uh, for today's presentation and uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this video we hope it is helpful to you we request you to subscribe build from basics youtube channel by clicking the bell button and share with others for those uh, whom you think it is uh, relevant this will encourage us to post more such videos in future you know you can always post your questions in the comments and uh, and your views why transformer and alternators are rated in kva so you can also post your views why it is rated in kva and um, let us know the topics and also let us know the topics that are that you would like to um no more details that you would like us to make videos in future and thank you very much and all the best